Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon where you are from around the world. We've got people here from the United Kingdom. We've got people here actually from Norway. <laughs> We've got people here from all parts of the United States. We've got people here and from different places in Europe as well as on the Africa, the continent of Africa, and I can go on and on. we got a couple of people from India here. So we've got a pretty... Um, pretty well varied population of people who are interested in power on express so let's get started this is not an opportunity call i'm going to actually talk about our first product called bio octus power on express is the direct sales arm for exergonics which is our parent company hello everyone my name is faith sloan so first i want to talk about torfin johnson he's um just a wonderful scientist. He's been working in the industry in terms of green energy, in terms of fertilizing, and a lot of good things um, 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 in terms of farming. And I mean, I can go on and on and on, but I'm not, and I'm going to show you how you can look that up. Well, BioOctus is the cube. It's the first physical product rollout for Exogonics, and it's going to be rolled out next month, February 2017. Um, Torfin Johnson, he founded, he's the founder and the chairman of Albedo Technology International. He um, founded it back in 1982. He served as the chairman. He's the director as well. He's been a director since 2002. Um, the corporate headquarters is actually in Norway. So let's talk about why PowerOn is always on the edge. They're always on the trend line in terms of integrating we're integrating cryptocurrency with, with network marketing, with green energy, and also with agricultural type products and products that uh, negative, that directly positively affect the environment is <laughs> really, truly exciting. There is an article in Business 2.0 magazine in May 2006. And I, I took a look at it. I've done quite a bit of research because I've seen some people talking about um, this new product, but it was very, very technical. And a lot of people aren't even well versed, like myself, well versed in global warming and all of these things, the, the, the albedo effect and all these things. So what I did is I did some research and I want to come back and I'm going to put that research in English for you for the layman. And, what, and the topic was, could the Sahara become Africa's next breadbasket? Because Torfin was doing some work over there in Africa because he's highly concerned about, you know, water, fresh water, um, um, the children. I mean, his interest in the environment and in the people is just, I mean, I've never seen anyone like that. I've done a lot of research on this man. He's done some wonderful work and have loads and loads of patents, okay? Well, he really truly believes it is, and, and this is something he believes in his heart, and he has proof to show. He's done extensive research. The startup he formulated, the startup has formulated a fertilizer, now listen to this, that boosts the soil's ability to reflect the sun. Why is that important? You know, you've heard about global warming and, and, you know, you have some people who don't believe in it. But the majority of researchers, we have about, I don't know, 20,000 research papers and only about nine disagree with the point. So that says a lot in itself. But this fertilizer is going to boost the soil's ability to reflect the sun, which in turn will reduce the surface temperature of the ground. And therefore, it's going to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions. And we know that carbon dioxide emissions, CO2, is what causes a lot of the pollution and global warming and, and, and just damage to the planet Earth. Okay, And it also, the third thing it does, it redu reduces the need for water by as much as 80%. Can you believe that? It is amazing. It has the potential, and this is coming from a professor at Norway's University of Stavanger. Um, he's an environmental technologies professor. He says it has the potential to affect both climate change and the two billion people living in water-stressed regions of the world. It's amazing. That's Toilet Bill Stott. I tell you, I am so excited about this product. You guys are going to be excited about it because of its practical use. Now, Johnson, he's well known in Norway for his environmentally friendly industrial technologies. He came up with this ideal after he discovered that most carbon dioxide in the atmosphere comes from nature. So rather than do what the other guys were doing, they're trying to control mankind's fossil fuel consumption, 
trying to control the people and the corporations, he says, you know what, why don't I just stop the soul's contribution to this damage instead. Why don't we go that route? Because he has more control over it. We have more control over that. That's something that we can do. So um, Exagonics, what they're going to do is they're going to target the $16 billion global fertilizer market and the $4 billion uh, irrigation market. When I was out there at the leadership meeting, um, about a month and a half or so ago, I believe, her time just gets by when I'm involved with Exagonics and Power On um, Express. But one of the things he said was, this product will replace fertilizers. You know, we get the runoff, we get the poisons, all of the, 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 the fertilizers runoff gets into our water, it gets into our bodies, and it kills us. It literally is killing us each and every day. And so he says, this particular product, okay, by Octus, all we have to do is use it twice a year. You use it twice a year, once or twice a year, and you're done. And there's no pesticides, no poisons, no chemicals in this product. This is an organic product. It's amazing, okay? So we're talking about sun rays, biomembrane. We're talking about soil. That's all we're talking about. So number one, what's a biomembrane? Quite, it's just as simple. It is made out of water and organic waste. What they do is they spray it onto the farmland. Number two, they take the layer, the layer of the pigmented um, fertilizer and increases the soil's ability to reflect solar energy. Okay, and that's what I talked about. You want that ability to reflect solar energy. And that's what we talk about when you hear people talk about the albedo effect. That's all it is, the reflection of solar energy. So if you have less sun being absorbed, then the land temperature cools, and guess what? The water content increases. It sounds simple, but the science is rather complex. He's got loads and loads of patents. I have a reference to one patent here. Okay, you can find that on Google. Now, what I like to do, let's see here. Yes, let's go back here. Now let's talk about the Earth's population, and this is a big consideration in terms of the product that we have, the BioArctis product. Okay. Now the Earth's population increased from 3 billion in 1960, the year I was born, to 6.2 billion in 2002. The expected increase is 11 billion people on this planet in 2050 before it starts slowly decreasing. See, in just 90 years, the population of the world will have almost quadrupled. That is some amazing statistics. So how are we going to feed these people? How are we going to feed all of these people and make sure that they have fresh water. We must manage to double today's agricultural productivity if we are to avoid the extensive famine in the world. We're talking about starvation. We need food. I mean, we know we throw away food. Don't get me started on our corporations, how we throw out food all of the time. But then again, there's a question about that food as well. See, the population explosion represents a major challenge in regards to both increasing access to clean drinking water for direct consumption and food production and meeting the rapidly growing need for more and more and more food, okay? Now, see, to date, to date, the problem, and let me talk about, before I talk about the objectives, I'm going to talk about the, the, the problem of the increasing need for food has been solved, or so they say, by um, changeover from the traditional agricultural um, to the modern base, modern um, knowledge-based agricultural, extensive use of what? Mechanical, working power, scientifically-based knowledge of how to cultivate the land, you know, for maximum efficiency, basically how they can make a whole lot of money on this land, you, you know, without spending a lot of money and without concern for quality, without concern for our environment. And see, important factors are the use of what? Artificial irrigation that they're doing. Um, they're using synthetic fertilizers, which are poisons, chemical weed, pest control and now we have the GMOs right so we've got the gene modified plants as well which give greater yields and are more resistant to pet pests but guess what it does to our bodies guess what it does to our environment guess what it does to the water it is just not good but that is the school of thought today 
Okay. And so with that said, there are problems associated, ladies and gentlemen, with modern agriculture. It's all about the money. And the serious problem that uh, may be a major obstacle for us to obtain the necessary doubling of the production capacity is that access, check this out, listen, access to fresh water is in the process of becoming very extremely scarce in large parts of the world. I remember when I was living in San Francisco, people are always talking about the continent of Africa, or you're talking about India, or you're talking about the desert. I was living in San Francisco, and we had to alternate the days in which we use water. And um, that was definitely back in the late 90s, late 90s, hitting right up on the early 2000s. And so it's right at home, it's right around the corner, the problems that we are encountering today, or right now. Okay, so it's not just over Overseas. So because according to the World Meteorological Organization, 70% of the world's fresh water uptake in 1997 was used for what? Check this out. 70% of the water was used for irrigation of agricultural areas. See, and this amount of water was, it was just 17% long time ago, you know. And so in 1997, the United Nations, they estimated that a third of the world population lives in areas with a moderate to high stress levels on the water supply. And they expected that as much as two thirds of the world population may experience the same thing in 2025. Hey, welcome to the future. The problem is also aggrav aggravated um, in that today water is still used inappropriately and it is simple, it is supplied to agricultural areas without any form of control of the runoff, um, the evaporation factors. And there's even some studies out there that shows that plants um, in dry, hot areas make use of little as 2% of the water that is supplied to the soil. And, and, and you know, that's some bad stuff here. Okay, and we have to be cognizant of this. Even if we don't know today, you won't know everything today, but make a conscious effort to learn some of this. So it's, it's very important that we use this fresh water that we have in an optimal way, okay, in order for us to achieve those productivity gains I talked about, okay, in the future for tomorrow's agricultural purposes. So that we need a method and we need a means and a way which we can radically increase the level of utilization of water supplied in agricultural arena. Okay, so let's talk about what Torfin wanted to do. Torfin's goal, his invention, his goal, there were threefold objectives. The main objective to provide a highly effective preparation capable of radically changing the soil's ability to retain water and nutrient salts and of having an antioxidizing effect on the surroundings in which is capable of altering the soil's albedo. And again, you're going to hear people talking about the cold and all of this. Albedo is basically, basically reflection, solar reflection. Okay, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but I'm not going to get really, really technical. Another objective of his invention is to provide a preparation, something that he actually created, which is our product, that can increase crops in such a simple and inexpensive manner that farmers in the poorest areas of the world will be able to afford to use it. And yet their third objective is to provide a preparation that is an efficient and inexpensive manner converts hot, barren, dry areas into fer fertile land. As a matter of fact, there's some research out there, go do your homework, there's some research out there where he's done some tests with membranes with this biomembrane in the Sahara Desert. And he documented that the, the reflection of the solar energy was at 85%. That's huge. And it was also confirmed by Norwegian Polar Research Institute. Now, why is it important to reflect the solar energy? It's really important to reflect the solar, solar energy to minimize global warming, okay, and to minimize the drying up of the water supply, okay, and to increase or to make fruitful all of the plants the foods that the farmers are growing in agricultural areas and not only not only in in other countries but here in america as well you know in iowa and and, and west virginia and you know all of our lands in the midwest and all of the farms out there and in, in texas or whatever you know i'm telling you guys this is some good stuff he's done here okay now 
So he's been working, um, Jensen, he, Johnson, he's been working on this to save the world from global warming, and he calls it the albedo biomembrane. That's what he calls his product, the albedo biomembrane. Okay, what's that? It's basically applied just the same way you will apply a fertilizer, <laughs> except it won't kill you. See, this membrane or this biomembrane will increase your crop yields in disadvantaged areas, but it also changes the ground level temperature. It cools it off. And I'm going to show you later uh, a secondary practical application for this that has nothing to do with farming, where well, it has a little bit to do with farming, but it can be used in urban areas as well. So this product, how is it made? He takes this organic waste, okay, drives the baby out, grind it into a powder, and then he used either black or white pigment. He would sometimes use, what was it, um, he would use seaweed or some other plant-based um, um, ingredient. It would dry it out, and then you take it and you mix it with water. So the farmer would simply mix it with water and just spray it on the ground, just as they do the fertilizer. And so the result is what? We now have a biodegradable layer, healthy layer, okay, organic layer that forms like a sponge in the upper soil. Okay, so it, it's going to either reflect the sun's energy back into space, or it's going to conserve the energy on the ground. And that eliminates a lot of the problems that we have with the albedo effect. So as the membrane can either increase the soil's uptake of heat from the sun or reflect the sun, it is possible to increase or reduce the temperature of the soil's upper layers. And, and the, this is what he said. This is his quote. The biomembrane can be adjusted to different climates. So it's not as if it's a one-size-fits-all where he's going to give it to a farmer in Iowa, and then he's going to give the same thing to a farmer, um, give, use the same thing in Sahara Desert, or give the same thing to someone in the Congo, if you will, or in Kenya on the continent of Africa, okay? So it really, truly depends. So he's going to have various different um, types of this bio octus product, okay? So, and it really depends on the local conditions, again, and you're going to adjust how much water is absorbed by the ground and how much is vaporized. Okay. And there was also some tests done by Johnson's company, um, Albedo Tech, and they found that under optimal conditions, I mean optimal conditions in a perfect world, that applying the biomembrane to soil can actually alter the Earth's uptake of energy from absorbing about 800 watts per square meter and reflecting back 200 watts and then absorbing that 200 watts and reflecting back 800 watts per square feet. See, what this means is this in turn decreases the ground level temperature and reduces evaporation, okay? And this means that the soil's absorption rate of carbon dioxide increases, hence there's going to be less carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere because it's staying where it belongs. It's staying where it belongs. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And so all they're doing is altering the ground's temperature, and then the biomembrane has quite another positive effect. It can help prevent water loss. And so what's the significance of that? Well, you're helping prevent water loss, and that's what we have a shortage of. So we've got a triple whammy because it's going to stop the erosion, and it's going to increase the agricultural crop yields. And I'm just going to say that's all it does, those three things. Save water, stop the erosion, increase the crop yields, and in some cases have increased the crop yields by 200%. They did some um, tests on the cabbage crop in Murcia, Spain. And um, they saw a 38% increase in the yields. And what I mean by yields is the plants and the food that you're, cre that you're producing. There were more and more, okay? And that is truly amazing. And they also did a similar test in, in, on the continent of Africa. In Nigeria, they went to the Middle East and also Central America, and they have all shown increases in corn yields as well. But the dry areas like the Sahara Desert, or even in southern Spain, if you will, they have the most to gain. So the drier you are, the more dire straits you are, the more you're going to gain. And it also can help cultivation in colder climates as well. Okay? That's, this is just truly amazing and exciting. Okay? So 
I, I was I took a look at a, a research letter and I was doing this research last night before I put this together and the title of that research letter was bright is the new black multi-year performance of high albedo roofs in an urban climate see remember I told you I was going to show you another way that you can utilize a product such as the bio octave and that is and this is something that he brought up that that um, Don Nasanka, the president and chairman and CEO of Exagonics brought up when we were at the leadership meeting out there in, in, in LA, he said that, can you imagine us being having the rights, us as distributors, us as members of Exagonics, as part of the direct sales force, being able to offer a product like this to corporate entities as well as residential entities in both the commercial and residential area, say, hey, you know, let's use your roof. We can put this product on top of the roof of your commercial building, on, a, on the top of the roof of your residential home, okay? And it can look something like what we have up here in this upper left-hand side or however you want that to look. And not only does it, it does it look nice, and not only does it contribute to the, the, the diminishment, diminishing of the global warming effect or the albedo effect, but it also cools your home. And so just imagine in the summertime, you've got these big buildings, you know, um, you know, Sears Towers, which has another name now, these huge skyscrapers, you know, and, and if you go to Dubai, for example, they've got some beautiful buildings out there, and they're huge. They've got some of the largest buildings you can imagine, and it's always hot there, right? So imagine putting this um, um, organism or putting this product up there and making it beautiful, while at the same time, they don't have to use use as much energy, as, as much electricity to cool the building, all of those floors. That will what? Save them money in the long run, a lot of money. See, so you just lay that membrane out on the rooftop of the building and you're going to create a beautiful rooftop garden or farm and it's going to save you money on air conditioning costs in the summer. We can, I tell you, matter of fact, there are many rooftops in the United States and abroad that are covered already. And most of them, though, unfortunately, are covered with synthetic products, which has a negative impact on the environment because what they did was, well, you know, instead of having uh, black, we'll have a light color, but it's still a synthetic product and it's still giving off nasty things into the environment, okay? So here is our chance, ladies and gentlemen, to do it right. I actually read another research letter. Um, uh, gosh, what was that other research letter I read? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember that one. I'll get back to that later. But this is cool. But I know they do a lot of that. I'm in the Chicago area, and they do a lot of this already in the Chicago area, both the synthetic crap and the natural organic products. But there's nothing like bio octaves out there on the market yet. Okay? And so I'm going to briefly touch upon the urban heat island effect. And this is for the inner cities, you know, the, 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 the cities, not the rural areas. So we could, they call it the urban heat island effect. It's the albedo effect. So what is albedo again? It's simply one thing. Forget all of the science behind it. I, I don't want to become a scientist. I, I got enough technology in my head. Albedo is the reflecting power of a surface. You know, how much or how less is it reflecting? That's all the albedo of effect is. And in our cities, it's really reflecting. See, it's been proven in both natural and man-made environments in recent years. See, in nature, you've got the white sea ice melting into the dark blue oceans. In the cities, it's been proven by research and in real life experiences that the formerly green environment, so what they did was they took a green environment, which is nature, that's how it was before we came here, uh, they took a formerly green environment, they covered it with pavements and skyscrapers with black rooftops, tar rooftops in the cities, and the earth is slowly being covered in what? Dark, sun absorbing colors. That is not good. So the urban heat island effect is the difference in the temperature between the urban area and the surrounding rural areas. Because we know that the urban areas have the majority in the large areas of this hard reflective surfaces out there. That is what they mean by the albedo effect. 
okay and we're getting that and we're building more and more skyscrapers and we're putting more and more um hard pavements down there we're getting rid of grass you know we're getting rid of trees and all we have is concrete a concrete life this ladies and gentlemen is the albedo effect these surfaces these hard dark surfaces absorb the solar radiation and then they quickly reflect the heat back into the atmosphere bam ouch so any reduction in this effect, any small reduction, if, if, if we get a lot of people that can reduce this effect, that's going to be a large positive effect on smog, airborne particles, asthma, all of this junk that's causing the kids to get sick already, all of this stuff in the atmosphere. See, because the roof areas, they're a significant part of the urban hard surfaces. Imagine putting plants on green surfaces and, they, and they'll be able to absorb that heat. And then we can use that heat through what we call evapotranspiration, which is like the, 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 um, the, the water will evaporate, but at the same time that water comes back, okay, and it's being utilized right back into the greenery, right back into the greenery. It's like a cycle. And while we eliminated a lot of that heat and eliminated a lot of that ozone layer issue, so we're going to thus minimize the um, effect of the um, albedo. And, um, and we already talked about what we were doing in Exagonics. Um, they're our technology partner, et cetera. These guys, they're just awesome. They're our parents' company. They're doing a lot of things in the... Um, area of renewable energy and green renewable energy and I talk a lot about this in the business presentation where we have these stackable um, battery management systems and things of the sort okay now what I like to do I like to talk to you about um, Don Nasanka you know those of you who are not familiar with Don Nasanka he's got a wealth of experience integrity and credibility underneath his belt okay he's partnered with companies such as coda energy what happened with coda and um i have some people who have come to me and says well you know coda wasn't all of that they filed bankruptcy well so companies file bankruptcy all of the time coda had hundreds and millions of dollars to get the job done in the green energy area and they spent a lot of money and they have a lot of equipment so don nasanka says hey you know, I want that equipment. I want that manufacturing facility. So he went and purchased it outright. And Vertigo, of course, that is our battery um, pack, people, the lithium ion battery creation guys and neighborhood power right now today, yesterday, last year, the year before, these aren't fly by night companies. They are actually putting up solar panels in both the commercial arena as well as the uh, our residential arena. Okay, he's the former director of Intersys Inc. Go look up Intersys. It is the world's largest industrial battery company. He founded Cocam. Now it's called Cocam America slash Dow Cocam. Why? Because he and Dow Chemical, you've heard of Dow Chemical, correct? They've merged those babies together, called it Dow Chemical. It's the first lithium polymer plant in the United States. I believe it's over there in Missouri, which is where Don Nasanka resides. And they have provided so many jobs. But you can go and you can look them up. He was honored by um, Lumina Foundation, which is actually the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, because he has humongous um, contribution to education and training people and the idea of innovation and technology and green energy, green renewable energy, and all kinds of great things that he's done, that he's initiated it and he's still heavily involved with. He... Um, he was the originator again at the Innovation Campus. He was recognized by President Barack Obama. He's a board member and trustee at MRI Global. Guess what MRI Global is? This is CRED, guys. It is the managing body of the National Renewable Energy Labs. What's that? It's the United States Government Authority on Energy. So they must think he knows something. He must be a subject matter expert in energy. He's a board member. He's an investor. Smith Electric Vehicle, you know, those green cars, um, electric cars. Advisory board member at the University of Central Missouri School of Business. And I tell you, see, Don Nasanka, he's a serial entrepreneur. 
He has a global vision for strategic growth and renewable energy market. Um, you know, he, he doesn't sit down. He doesn't stop. He is one of the pioneers in the industry, one of the driving forces in introducing advanced energy storage technologies in the United States. So imagine we've got the renewable, green renewable energy, and now we have bio octaves. So now we're hitting, we're hitting this green thing from all areas. He is talking about saving the world, one person at a time, one product at a time. And with our help, Empower On Express, with using us as the direct sales force, we're going to get these products out there. And you're going to see this timeline as well, okay? He was actually cited for actively being involved in the advancement of lithium battery technology. He started out as an industrial engineer, I believe. And um, he was the founder and president, again, of, of um, Colcam America. And that's where he implemented that strategic plan to mass produce lithium batteries and was instrumental in the launch of power systems for the electric vehicle market. And so then that was that joint venture I told you about he had with Dow Chemical Company that allowed has come to expand and it's huge and it's out there in Missouri. Go visit them. It is one of the leading manufacturers of lithium batteries in the world and he is the founder of it. Okay, so I can go on and on and on, but here's what I'm going to tell you to do go to exagonics.com. I mean, just about us, you'll see him. I tell you, you're going to see the impressive qualification of the Exagonics uh, management team. And I'm going to end it right here. I just wanted to talk about bio um, octaves, and I'm not going to go on and talk about the cheaper, cleaner, better energy for our customers, but I'm going to talk about that in the, um, in the um, business opportunity presentation. I'd like to say thank you all. I'm excited about this product. I am excited about where we are with Power On Express. I'm excited about the cryptocurrency, guys. I'm just excited and ecstatic about what they're bringing to the table where we can help people while at the same time help ourselves. Okay, this company is going to be a sustainable company. It can't help but be a sustainable company because it's not just a, a network marketing company that decided to, okay, you know, we know network marketing, let's create a company. It's not a company where they says, okay, let's put together a compensation plan and throw a product around it and say, okay, we're legitimate. <laughs> you know, we're legitimate. No, not at all. I tell you, Exagonics has been around for years and years and years. Don Nasanka and his team combined, they have decades and decades and decades of experience in the industry. People know them. They know nothing about network marketing. They don't care. They don't care about the cryptocurrency except for they want us to push the product. And as we push the product, the value of the cryptocurrency will indeed increase. But I'll talk about that later on. You guys have a nice day. Yay, February is almost upon us. Bring in as many people as you can right now today. Right now today. Don't wait. Get back to the person who got you onto this webinar about our first product, and um, you won't regret it. Good day. Good evening. Good night.